What's up, hello, and welcome to today's 360 Life video. We have seen a lot of discussions and have been asked many times whether a NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti will work in VR. So today we are going to run some benchmarks, jump in some games, and are going to share the results with you guys. So stick around. Welcome back and thanks for hanging out. If you like the content you see today, hit that like button, drop us a comment below, and consider subscribing so you don't miss any of our virtual reality coverage. Let's get started and see how our NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti performs in VR. This is how our testing is going to be performed today. We will run through each of VR Mark's three benchmarks three times at both stock GPU speed and overclocked. We will then average the scores of each benchmark and compare them to VRMark's built-in scores. Next, we will jump into VR and test some common titles and offer some subjective feedback as to the actual in-game performance. Beat Saber, Space Pirate Trainer, Raw Data, and Arizona Sunshine were the titles we chose for this. Let's check in and see how the benchmarks are going. Just running the benchmarks. So while we are waiting for the VR Marks benchmarks to finish up, let's talk more about this video card that we are looking at today. We are using an EVGA Superclocked Edition 1050 Ti, which has four gigabytes of GDDR5 video memory and comes with a factory overclock running 1,354 megahertz base and with a 1,468 megahertz boost. Of course, we will be pushing well past those stock frequencies and maxing out the overclock potential of this little card for our testing. It has 768 CUDA cores and along with equivalent cards range in price between $160 and $190. Let's check back in and see how those benchmarks are coming along. Still running the benchmarks. Okay, well, while she finishes up, let's quickly take a look at the rest of the system we are working with today. At the heart of this system is an AMD R3 2200G with 16 gigs of G-Skill Flare X DDR4 3200MHz RAM, and this is all running on an ASUS TUF 450M Plus motherboard. We've got a budget M2 SSD on board, along with a 600W Corsair, all riding on our new PC test bench we bought from Amazon. Video coming soon. Benchmarking's done. Well, the numbers are in, so let's look through the results. The first test is the Orange Room Benchmark. The Orange Room Benchmark tests for the minimum recommended requirements for both the HTC Vive and Oculus Rift. We see our 1050 Ti hits an average score of 3,927 on factory settings and hits 4,297 on our overclock. Both of these scores come in higher than the Rift minimum recommended spec, but fall short of the VR Mark's VR Ready score. It is worth noting, and our overclock tests come in at almost 10% higher than factory, so it is definitely worth your time to optimize your overclock. Next is the Cyan Room Benchmark. The Cyan Room Benchmark tests the system utilizing DirectX 12. Here, once again, both of our scores come in just above the Rift minimum recommended marks at 2,204 and 2,402. While we again fall short of VR Mark's VR Ready spec, it's looking like this little GPU may do okay if we are careful about what titles we play and their video settings. Last, we have the Blue Room Benchmark. The Blue Room Benchmark is the most intense of the benchmarks, using higher resolutions and more complicated geometry to provide an idea of how this will fare with the next-gen hardware and software. On these final tests, we see our factory 1050 Ti fall a little bit short of the Rift spec. But with our overclocked results, we managed to jump back up and over the Rift recommended minimums. But as expected, fall well below the rest of the PC categories. 
Honestly, the question was never, will a 1050 Ti work in VR for years to come? It was, will it work right now? So let's jump into some gameplay tests and answer the real question. We tested with Beat Saber, Arizona Sunshine, Raw Data, and Space Pirate Trainer. Now to preface, we adjusted all of the video settings down to minimums where we could. This did give us good results, and with these titles never experienced any stuttering or perceivable dropped frames. I will admit I am both a little bit surprised and a little impressed that this little inexpensive video card was able to provide as good a VR experience as it did. Your mileage may vary depending on the title, as more indie and less optimized titles may not run as well. And certainly as newer, higher end experiences are released, they are going to pose more and more of an issue as time progresses. So to wrap this up, if you already own a gaming PC and it's equipped with a 1050 Ti and are looking at buying your first headset, do it. Just know that you will need to upgrade the GPU down the line, manage your expectations, and know you are just meeting the very minimum of specs and not all VR experiences are going to perform optimally. Now, if you are buying or building a new rig for VR, I would recommend saving a little bit more money and starting with a higher end GPU. But if you just cannot stand to wait any longer, at least you know you can get in and play some titles. You just need to weigh the fact that you may be throwing away good money when you finally do upgrade and find yourself with an extra 1050 Ti down the line. That's it for today's video. I hope you liked it, learned something, or just stuck around to the end to tell us how badly you hated it. Well, hit that like button if you liked it. Leave us a comment below. Subscribe for more VR news and reviews. And don't forget to enjoy that 360 life.